The GIMP color tool has two main modes, and I'm going to open up a document just to do some color work and explain visually a few of the things I'm going to cover in this video. So the first mode of the GIMP color tool is this little compact mode. You've got here on the left, it sits right in between the toolbox and the tool options. And you've got a foreground color and a background color. Now the foreground color is often abbreviated to FG. It's the color that sits on top. It's the color that will be used for if your brush tool or your uh, bucket fill tool. Uh, and your gradient tool will use a combination of both colors. As you can see, if you open your gradient tool, the first option that pops up is FG to BG. And that means foreground to background. So here's a foreground. Right now, mine is black. My background is white. So this is the first mode of the GIMP color tool. And you've got two other tools right here in its compact form. A reset swatch thing, which will put, uh, it'll restore the default values back to black and white. And then a swap button, which will swap your foreground and your background, which is very useful for painting uh, or if your design has two colors primarily and you're just switching between them doing highlights. So let's look at the second mode of the GIMP color tool. Once you open up the color tool, you'll see these five tabs across the top and then some sliders on the right. But the most important part of this is perhaps the visual representation of the color that you have and the crosshair in this little window. So what you can do, say I wanted to find a nice deep blue, I could use this bar on the right here to find my hue. And the hue is like the color class, if you will. It kind of scrolls through the color wheel without changing your saturation or your value. It's purely red, green, blue, or RGB. So I'll find my blues, maybe right here. And then I'm gonna use this crosshair just by clicking and dragging. Gonna find the nice dark blue I want, maybe a little bit more gray than this. And right there you can see my current color compared to my old color. And then I can press this arrow. And what that does is this, that arrow will export that color into my recent colors pane down here. And my recent colors pane holds 12 of my recently used colors. And it's very rare that you're gonna be using more than 12 colors in a document unless you're painting. So this is pretty much all you need as far as color storage goes. And often you'll find uh, colors from older documents that you worked on two or three days ago or maybe the last project. So uh, that's very useful for storing colors and then accessing them later. Now right above that, you've got HTML notation. If you need to know what that is, you already do know, but just for the sake of being comprehensive. Uh, basically, this is a hexadecimal color notation, as it says in the help hint right there, that you're gonna use an HTML or CSS document. It's basically like a web code for the color. Now, right next to that is a really important tool called the eyedropper tool. And this tool is also in your toolbox. You can press O to access it at any time. That's O, no control or command or anything, just O. And what this lets you do is it lets you find and uh, lift a color right from the document. So I'm gonna go press that tool and then click my background and it automatically lifts that color, which is white in this case, puts it as my current color. Then I can put that into my color history and I've got that accessible pretty quick in this window. Right above that, I've got blue, green, and red sliders. So this is how much each of these uh, colors, hues rather, how much they blend to create uh, my current selected color. And then right above that, I've got value, which is uh, how dark or light the color you have is. And then saturation. And you'll notice uh, as, I, as I click each of these little radio buttons, the 2D visual view changes to represent that variable alone. And my saturation is the mix between my hue and like black and white. It's how much pigment is in each pixel, basically, if you're a painter. Uh, and then my hue is, again, my color class, and you can just change that, turn my saturation up, and you can watch that hue just really light up. So that is your basic uh, color tool tab. The second tab is really interesting. Now, say you've got this green color selected. I'll move over to my second tab, and it automatically converts that color into CMYK as best as it can. 
and the profile is still RGB, but it'll give you a better idea of what color you're working with. Uh, say you want to like do a three color document and it's a really special printing job. I can just convert that CMYK, then send it off to the printer. So just select your color, find the color you want, and then you can just go to that printer tab and it'll pull it up in the CMYK profile. Now to the right of that, you have a really interesting mode that I don't think is too useful, but I will explain it anyways. This is like a mixer mode uh, and it's supposed to simulate a paintbrush, I believe. And on your right here, you got this little slider. The slider is your pressure or how much uh, of the new paint that you're taking. So if you have your current color, I'm gonna mix in some red with that. It'll turn it more purple. I'm just kind of clicking here and it like sort of t like samples from that paint and it simulates the mixing of the paint on like a, on a palette uh, in, in like a real painter's scenario. I don't think it's too useful, but there it is just in case. Now, the next one is useful. It's a nice little color wheel, which is a f uh, feature that is mysteriously hard to find in Photoshop, which is why I love that it's right here in GIMP. You can use this to do all kinds of stuff, uh, find complementary colors. Uh, it's, it's very useful, and I usually keep mine on this mode most of the time. Uh, right next to that, you've got your basic palette. I don't think this is very useful because your color history uh, 12 slots is quite a lot and as I said for most designs you're not going to go over that so most importantly is your CMYK converter your basic 2D visual selector and mixer and then your color wheel which is pretty cool uh, and that is the second mode of the GIMP color tool so just to review two modes of the GIMP color tool the first of which is a small minimized on the left that's sandwiched between the toolbox and the tool options. You've got foreground and background colors, and then you can open that up by clicking on either of the colors to replace them with this new current color in the visual browser. So that is the GIMP color tool. And you're now much more equipped to take on colorful designs.